show for you. It's Friday, yes. Woo! I know, I know, the last Friday before Halloween, which is exciting. Um, this, less exciting, but equally important. We, I was talking to my friends about this and my team this morning. We are in the midst of a watershed moment in this country right now. Do you feel it? Yeah. Yeah. We are in the midst of a watershed moment as the drip, drip, drip of sexual harassment allegations has now turned into a nonstop downpour. I mean, it's a tsunami now. In just the last 24 hours, more men accused of predatory sexual behavior and more and more women are coming forward. It's amazing to see these women finding their courage after years in so many cases of keeping it quiet. As of this morning, two more women uh, have accused now former NBC political analyst Mark Halperin of sexual harassment while working at ABC over a decade ago, bringing the current number of his accusers to nine, according to reporting by CNN and The Washington Post. What the women have to say, I warn you, is graphic. Eleanor McManus says that when she was a college student seeking advice from him, Halpern tried to kiss her and attempted to do a bit more, is how she described it, during a meeting in his office. But then there was another woman, Diana Goldberg, who says when she was a young researcher at ABC, Halpern insisted that she close the door and sit on his lap. She says he was physically aroused in the moment and that it happened on multiple occasions, leaving her feeling shaken and ashamed. In a statement to CNN, Halpern has said, I now understand that my behavior was inappropriate and caused others pain. I'm deeply sorry and I apologize. We're gonna talk about this in a minute, but can I just stop and say, you now understand? Come on, right, come on. If this, if what, and cause she's not the only one accusing him of this aroused state and grabbing women in the office. You know that's wrong. Right. You know it when you do it, you know it now, you always know it. Yeah. Um, there, you know, that, that case is still unfolding, but just for the record, MSNBC has said, we find the story and the allegations very troubling. Mark Halpern's leaving his role as a contributor until the questions around his past conduct are fully understood. Then there's this guy. This guy's not getting enough attention, James Toback. Had you ever heard of him before this week? I had not either, but he's this big screenwriter director out in Hollywood behind films like Bugsy, uh, and many others that you would know. He's just not quite as big as Weinstein, but he apparently is an even bigger problem. Um, according to the LA Times, the number of women now coming forward about him, he's 72 years old, is no longer over 200. It's now over 300. Wow. 300, 310. Come on, right? Come on. Everyone can understand a guy gets in trouble, he misreads a situation and kind of crosses the line, right? That can happen in HR. You get a slap on the wrist, you move on. Most women aren't that thin-skinned that they're, you know, going to make a federal case out of that. 310? Come on, this is outrageous. Two more of those women with this guy Toback spoke out yesterday, including actresses Selma Blair, you know her, and Rachel McAdams, detailing a dark account of this man's behavior, including luring them to his hotel room with promises of movie roles, demanding that they get naked so he could see, you know, picture them in the role, and according to Selma Blair, rubbing up against her to the point of completion, if you will. I know, right, that's the right reaction right there, right? It's like this. We debated, like, how do we get to this stuff at 9 a.m. in the morning? How are you gonna talk about this stuff? But it's, it, it's less meaningful if we just gloss right over it without giving you some of the accusations, some of the details, so forgive me. Uh, Rachel McAdams says that this guy, Toback, asked her to read passages out loud from different reviews of his films and different critics talking about his work, and then he went off to the bathroom to take care of his business. She says, when he came back, he announced it. I just pleasured myself thinking about you. It's disgusting. Think about this. Think about how you react in this moment when you're thinking you're halfway to getting a role and then this gets unleashed on you. At first she says she felt shame, which is a word they're all using. All the harassment victims are using this because we blame ourselves. What did I do to bring it on? Why did I go up to the room? Why did I stand there? Why didn't I run? It, it, doesn't it tell you something that all the women are having that same feeling? Are we all to blame? Are we all to blame? We're not, we're, get, we're starting to get it. And now McAdams is saying this, this has all got to stop. Yes, it does. It does. And then, then there's Harvey Weinstein. He now stands accused by 70 women of sexual misconduct, 70, including actress Rose McGowan, who has accused him of rape. Now, she's going to make her first public appearance tonight at the Women's Convention in Detroit. She'll also appear on a panel with survivors of sexual assault. Even, I don't know if you saw this, but even Ellen DeGeneres has come under fire this week. Did you see this yesterday? Ellen um, got in some trouble after she posted this picture with Katy Perry yesterday. 
in which DeGeneres is gawking at Katy Perry's breasts with the caption, it's time to bring out the big balloons. Ellen's accused of promoting a double standard with actor Michael Rappaport, remember him from the film Girls, among others? Uh, he tweeted out, if a man sent out that same tweet, the world would stop. And we're going to hear more names in the days ahead. This is not, it's not done. It's not done by a long shot. A senior reporter over at CNN where the Halpern story broke now says that yesterday alone, yesterday alone, five people reach out to, reached out to him with sexual harassment allegations against five different media figures. Dylan Byers is the reporter. He says this is not slowing. In fact, it's snowballing. You can feel that. We conducted our own survey here at today.com slash Megan Today, and here's what you said when we asked if you've ever seen a woman sexually harassed at work. 85% said, yep. 59% said you regretted not taking action after witnessing harassment in the workplace. I think many people are feeling that now. You know, it's like we've been living in a culture where you look the other way. You accepted this as a, a cost of doing business as a female. Uh, no more. We have been talking a lot about what we as women can do in these instances. But what about the men? You know, what about the male perspective? For that, we turn this morning to a man who knows his way around corporate America. You know him from Shark Tank. Businessman Kevin O'Leary is here. Let's welcome Kevin. Asking ourselves what we do, you, you actually are a man who runs companies. You say it starts at the top. How so? Well, let me speak on behalf of all the men and women that run companies in America, from public to private, and tell you this on their behalf. There is no tolerance for this. The tolerance for this is zero. And the reason that is happening... Let's be, let's be pragmatic. The reason that's happening is not only is it morally wrong, we all have children that we want to teach about what is important in life, but it's bad for business. It's not good for your employees because they don't feel safe where they work. Your customers don't want to hear these stories. Your board of directors is horrified by these, and ultimately your shareholders vote with their dollars. But how does that, you know, how do we make that a reality? That's your philosophy. But how do we make that a reality in the lower ranks, zero tolerance? Well, I'm going to say you're part of that revolution, actually. Think about what happens to people. It happens every day. You're bringing out a new case every day now. Their careers are destroyed. Their families are affected. Their businesses, their futures wiped out. They become a pariah. They become radioactive waste business. Their careers are over. Mm -hmm. Now, with you, if you know with certainty that's going to happen to you, it becomes a deterrent. And it, in some industries, I'll give you an example. Back in the 70s and 80s in financial services and banks and insurance companies, th there was all kinds of allegations of this happening all the time. Today, it's practically zero because in that sector, the HR, primarily women running these big HR departments are saying, we have zero tolerance for this. When you come into this environment and want to put your career here, if you ever do this, zero tolerance, you're gone. And when that happens, well, what do you, you say, never get another job. What do you say to, to men about how they interact with women. I think a lot of men are like, I don't know what to do. What is harassment now? Can I make a joke? Can I, when you came out here, I greeted you with a nice hug. I still think that's okay, but it, I guess some women might not want that. I think the reality is though, we're talking about a different category of behavior. Somebody comes over when you're sitting in the meeting room aroused. We're in a very clear red line territory. Megan, you, men know that's wrong. They just know it. Now, whether they have the moral fortitude and compass to stay aligned with reality or not is what we're talking about. Some percentage become intoxicated with power and they go to the dark side. That's what's happening here. And the cost of doing that in the past was not evident. Today, it's very evident. So you, what do you say? There was this guy, Stephen Moore, over on CNN the other day, right. who's saying, no man should meet with a woman alone. Like, treat it like your OBGYN exam. There's got to be a witness in the room at all times. If for any meeting you have with a no, male superior. 
you know... That's ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous. And 99% of men and women understand that their behavior matters. How they speak and communicate with people matters. The respect you have to have with your significant other is ultimately the most important thing. Let me give you an example that is very applicable in business, but comes out of relationships between men and women, or men and men, or women and women, doesn't matter, whoever your significant other is. Think about it this way, and I think everybody in here will understand this. When you fall in love with somebody, and this is an analogy for business too, and you build that beautiful relationship with them based on trust, the first time you lie, you lose 50% of the equity in that relationship forever. You never get it back. Even though you may stay together, you're never the same. It's the same in business. You have to trust each other and obviously communicate and be realistic about what your expectations are in a workplace, mm -hmm. particularly if you're somebody's boss. That's the thing. I think that's the number one takeaway. If you are in a superior position to someone, <laughs> do not hit on them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit on them, right? It's a simple rule of thumb, no Kevin. Way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.